a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Winston Churchill Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill was a British politician, army officer, and writer, who was Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1940 to 1945 and again from 1951 to 1955. As Prime Minister, Churchill led Britain to victory in the Second World War. Churchill represented five constituencies during his career as Member of Parliament. Ideologically an economic liberal and British imperialist, he began and ended his parliamentary career as a member of the Conservative Party, which he led from 1940 to 1955, but for 20 years from 1904 he was a prominent member of the Liberal Party, of mixed English and American parentage. Churchill was born in Oxfordshire to an aristocratic family. Joining the British Army, he saw action in British India, the Anglo-Sudan War, and the Second Boer War gaining fame as a war correspondent and writing books about his campaigns. Elected an MP in 1900, initially as a conservative, he defected to the Liberals in 1904. In H. H. Asquith's Liberal government, Churchill served as President of the Board of Trade, Home Secretary, and First Lord of the Admiralty, championing prison reform and workers' social security. During the First World War, he oversaw the Gallipoli Campaign. After it proved a disaster, he resigned from government and served in the Royal Scots Fusiliers on the Western Front. In 1917 he returned to government under David Lloyd George as Minister of Munitions, and was subsequently Secretary of State for War, Secretary of State for Rare, then Secretary of State for the Colonies. After two years out of Parliament, he served as Chancellor of the Exchequer in Stanley Baldwin's Conservative government returning the pound sterling in 1925 to the gold standard at its pre-war parity. A move widely seen as creating deflationary pressure on the UK economy. Out of office during the 1930s, Churchill took the lead in calling for British rearmament to counter the growing threat from Nazi Germany. At the outbreak of the Second World War, he was reappointed First Lord of the Admiralty. Following Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's resignation in 1940, Churchill replaced him. Churchill oversaw British involvement in the Allied war effort, resulting in victory in 1945. His wartime leadership has been widely praised. However, several of his decisions have proved controversial. After the Conservatives' defeat in the 1945 general election, he became leader of the opposition. Amid the developing Cold War with the Soviet Union, he publicly warned of an iron curtain of Soviet influence in Europe and promoted European unity. He was elected Prime Minister in the 1951 election. His second term was preoccupied with foreign affairs, including the Malayan Emergency, Mau Mau Uprising, Korean War, and a UK-backed Iranian coup. Domestically his government emphasized house building and developed an atomic bomb. In declining health, Churchill resigned as Prime Minister in 1955, although he remained an MP until 1964. Upon his death in 1965, he was given a state funeral. Widely considered one of the 20th century's most significant figures, Churchill remains popular in the UK and Western world, where he is seen as a victorious wartime leader who played an important role in defending liberal democracy from the spread of fascism. Also praised as a social reformer and writer. Among his many awards was the Nobel Prize in Literature. Conversely, his imperialist views, coupled with his sanctioning of human rights abuses and the suppression of anti-imperialist movements seeking independence from the British Empire, have generated considerable controversy. Childhood and Schooling, 1874-1895 Churchill was born at the family's ancestral home, Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire, on 30 November 1874, at which time the United Kingdom was the dominant world power, a direct descendant of the Dukes of Marlborough. His family were among the highest levels of the British aristocracy, and thus he was born into the country's governing elite. His paternal grandfather, John Spencer Churchill, 7th Duke of Marlborough, had been a member of parliament for ten years, a member of the Conservative Party who served in the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli, his own father, Lord Randolph Churchill, 
had been elected Conservative MP for Woodstock in 1873. His mother, Jenny Churchill, was from an American family whose substantial wealth derived from finance. The couple had met in August 1873, and were engaged three days later, marrying at the British Embassy in Paris in April 1874. The couple lived beyond their income and were frequently in debt. According to the biographer Sebastian Hafner, the family were, rich by normal standards, but poor by those of the rich. In 1876 John Spencer Churchill was appointed Viceroy of Ireland, with Randolph as his private secretary, resulting in the Churchill family's relocation to Dublin, when the entirety of Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. It was here that Jenny's second son, Jack, was born in 1880. There has been speculation that Randolph was not his biological father. Throughout much of the 1880s Randolph and Jenny were effectively estranged, during which she had many suitors. Churchill had virtually no relationship with his father. Referring to his mother, Churchill later stated that, I loved her dearly, but at a distance. His relationship with Jack would be warm. And they were close at various points in their lives. In Dublin, he was educated in reading and mathematics by a governess, while he and his brother were cared for primarily by their nanny, Elizabeth Ann Everest. Churchill was devoted to her and nicknamed her, Womany. He later wrote that, she had been my dearest and most intimate friend during the whole of the twenty years I had lived. Aged seven, he began boarding at Street, George's school in Ascot, Berkshire. He hated it, did poorly academically, and regularly misbehaved. Visits home were to Connaught Place in London, where his parents had settled. While they also took him on his first foreign holiday, to Gastein in Austria-Hungary. As a result of poor health, in September 1884 he moved to Brunswick School in Hove. There, his academic performance improved, but he continued to misbehave. He narrowly passed the entrance exam which allowed him to begin studies at the Elite Harrow School in April 1888. There, his academics remained high, he excelled particularly in history, but teachers complained that he was unpunctual and careless. He wrote poetry and letters which were published in the school magazine, Haravian, and won a fencing competition. His father insisted that he be prepared for a career in the military, and so Churchill's last three years at Harrow were spent in the army form. He performed poorly in most of his exams. On a holiday to Bournemouth in January 1893, he fell and was knocked unconscious for three days. In March he took a job at a cram school in Lexham Gardens, South Kensington, before holidaying in Switzerland and Italy that summer. He made three attempts to be admitted to the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, only succeeding on the third. There, he was accepted as a cadet in the cavalry, starting his education in September 1893. In August 1894 he and his brother holidayed in Belgium, and he spent free time in London, joining protests at the closing of the Empire Theatre, which he had frequented. His Sandhurst education lasted for 15 months. He graduated in December 1894. Shortly after Churchill finished at Sandhurst, in January 1895, his father died. This led Churchill to adopt the belief that members of his family inevitably died young. Cuba, India, and Sudan, 1895-1899 In February 1895, Churchill was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the 4th Queen's Own Hussars Regiment of the British Army, based at Aldershot. This position earned him a wage of £150 a year, which was far outstripped by his expenditure. In July, he rushed to Crouch Hill, North London to sit with Everest as she lay dying, subsequently organising her funeral. Churchill was eager to witness military action and used his mother's influence to try to get himself posted to a war zone. In the autumn of 1895, he and Reginald Barnes travelled to Cuba to observe its war of independence. They joined Spanish troops attempting to suppress independence fighters and were caught up in several skirmishes. In North America, he also spent time in New York City, staying with the wealthy politician Burke Cochran at the latter's Fifth Avenue residence. Cochran profoundly influenced the young Churchill. Churchill admired the United States, writing to his brother that it was a very great country, and telling his mother what an extraordinary people the Americans are. With the Hazars, Churchill arrived in Bombay, British India, in October 1896, 
They were soon transferred to Bangalore, where he shared a bungalow with Barnes. Describing India as a godless land of snobs and whores, Churchill remained posted there for 19 months, during the course of which he made three visits to Calcutta, expeditions to Hyderabad and the northwest frontier, and two visits back to Britain. Believing himself poorly educated, he began a project of self-education, reading the work of Plato, Adam Smith, Charles Darwin, and Henry Hallam. Most influential for him were however Edward Gibbon's The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Winwood Reed's The Martyrdom of Man, and the writings of Thomas Babington Macaulay. Keenly interested in British parliamentary affairs, in a private letter he declared himself, a liberal in all, but name, but added that he could never endorse the Liberal Party's support for Irish Home Rule. Instead, he allied himself to the Tory democracy wing of the Conservative Party, and on a visit home gave his first public speech for the Conservatives' Primrose League in Bath. Reflecting a mix of reformist and conservative perspectives, he supported the promotion of secular, non-denominational education while opposing women's suffrage, referring to the suffragettes as a ridiculous movement. Churchill decided to join the Malakand Field Force led by Bindan Blood in its campaign against Momand rebels in the Swat Valley of northwest India. Blood agreed on the condition that Churchill be assigned as a journalist. To ensure this, he gained accreditation from the Pioneer and the Daily Telegraph, for whom he wrote regular updates. In letters to family, he described how both sides in the conflict slaughtered each other's wounded, although he omitted any reference to such actions by British troops in his published reports. He remained with the British troops for six weeks before returning to Bangalore in October 1897. There, he wrote his first book, The Story of the Malakand Field Force, which was published by Longman to largely positive reviews. He also wrote his only work of fiction, Savrola, a Roman arc left set in an imagined Balkan kingdom. It was serialized in Macmillan's magazine between May-December 1899 before appearing in book form. While staying in Bangalore in the first half of 1898, Churchill explored the possibility of joining Herbert Kitchener's military campaign in the Sudan. Kitchener was initially reticent, claiming that Churchill was simply seeking publicity and medals. After spending time in Calcutta, Meerut, and Peshawar, Churchill sailed back to England from Bombay in June. There, he used his contacts, including a visit to the Prime Minister Lord Salisbury at 10 Downing Street to get himself assigned to Kitchener's campaign. He agreed that he would write a column describing the events for the Morning Post. He sailed for Egypt, where he joined the 21st Lancers at Cairo before they headed south along the River Nile to take part in the Battle of Omdurman against the army of Sudanese leader Abdallah ibn Muhammad. Churchill was critical of Kitchener's actions during the war, particularly the latter's unmerciful treatment of enemy wounded and his desecration of Muhammad Ahmad's tomb in Omdurman. Following the battle, Churchill gave skin from his chest for a graft for an injured officer. Back in England by October, Churchill wrote an account of the campaign, published as the River War in November 1899. Attempts at a parliamentary career in South Africa, 1899-1900. Deciding that he wanted a parliamentary career, Churchill pursued political contacts and gave addresses at three Conservative Party meetings. It was also at this point that he courted Pamela Plowden, later Countess of Lytton. Although a relationship did not ensue, they remained lifelong friends. In December he returned to India for three months, largely to indulge his love of the game polo. While in Calcutta, he stayed for a week in the home of Viceroy George Nathaniel Curzon. On the journey home, he spent two weeks at the Savoy Hotel in Cairo, where he was introduced to the Khadiva Bas II, before arriving in England in April. He refocused his attention on politics, addressing further conservative meetings and networking at events such as a Rothschild's dinner party. He was selected as one of the two conservative parliamentary candidates at the June 1899 by-election in Oldham, Lancashire. Although the Oldham seats had previously been held by the conservatives, the election was a narrow liberal victory. Anticipating the outbreak of the Second Boer War between Britain and the Boer Republics, Churchill sailed from Southampton to South Africa as a journalist writing for the Daily Mail and Morning Post. From Cape Town, in October he travelled to the conflict zone near Ladysmith, then besieged by Boer troops. 
before spending time at Estcourt before heading for Colenso. After his train was derailed by Boer artillery shelling, he was captured as a prisoner of war and interned in a Boer POW camp in Pretoria. In December, Churchill and two other inmates escaped the prison over the Latrine Wall. Churchill stowed aboard a freight train and later hid within a mine, shielded by the sympathetic English mine owner. Wanted by the Boer authorities, he again hid aboard a freight train and travelled to safety in Portuguese East Africa. Sailing to Durban, Churchill found that his escape had attracted much publicity in Britain. He did not return home, and in January 1900 he was appointed a lieutenant in the South African Light Horse Regiment, joining Redvers Buller's fight to relieve the siege of Ladysmith and take Pretoria. In his writings during the campaign, he chastised British hatred for the Boer, calling for them to be treated with generosity and tolerance, and urging a speedy peace. After the war was over he would call for the British to be magnanimous in victory. He was among the first British troops into Ladysmith and Pretoria. He and his cousin, the Duke of Marlborough, were able to get ahead of the rest of the troops in Pretoria, where they demanded and received the surrender of 52 Boer prison camp guards. After the victory in Pretoria, he returned to Cape Town and sailed for Britain in July. In May, while he had still been in South Africa, his Morning Post dispatches had been published as London to Ladysmith via Pretoria, which sold well. Early Years in Parliament, 1900-1905 Arriving in Southampton in July 1900, Churchill rented a flat in London's Mayfair, using it as his base for the next six years, and hired a personal secretary. He stood again as a Conservative candidate for the seat of Oldham at the 1900 general election, securing a narrow victory. At the age of 25, he was now an MP. MPs were not then paid a wage and, to earn money, Churchill embarked on a speaking tour focusing on his South African experiences. After touring Britain in late October and November he proceeded to the US, where his first lecture was introduced by the writer Mark Twain. In the US, he met President William McKinley and Vice President Theodore Roosevelt. The latter invited Churchill to dinner, but took a dislike to him. Churchill then crossed to Canada to give more lectures, and in spring 1901 gave talks in Paris, Madrid, and Gibraltar. In October 1900, he published Ian Hamilton's March, a book about his South African experiences. In February 1901, Churchill took his seat in the House of Commons, where his maiden speech gained widespread press coverage. He associated with a group of conservatives known as the Hooligans. Although he was critical of the Conservative government on various issues, he condemned the British execution of a Boer military commandant, and voiced concerns about the levels of public expenditure. In response, Prime Minister Arthur Balfour asked him to join a parliamentary select committee on the topic. He opposed an increase in army funding, suggesting that any additional military expenditure should go to the Navy. This upset the Conservative front bench, but gained support from Liberals. He increasingly socialised with senior Liberals, and particularly the Liberal imperialists like H. H. Asquith. In this context, he later wrote, he drifted steadily to the left of British parliamentary politics. He privately considered the gradual creation by an evolutionary process of a democratic or progressive wing to the Conservative Party, or alternately a central party, to unite the Conservatives and Liberals. In the House of Commons, Churchill increasingly voted with the Liberal opposition against the government. In February 1903, he was among 18 Conservative MPs who voted against the government's increase in military expenditure. He backed the Liberal vote of censure against the use of Chinese indentured labourers in South Africa, and in favour of a Liberal bill to restore legal rights to trade unions. His April 1904 parliamentary speech upholding the rights of trade unions was described by the pro-conservative Daily Mail as, radicalism of the reddest type. In May 1903, the Liberal Unionist MP Joseph Chamberlain, then the Secretary of State for the Colonies in a Conservative government, called for the introduction of tariffs on goods imported into the British Empire from outside. Churchill became a leading Conservative voice against such economic protectionism, describing himself as a sober admirer of the principles of free trade. In July he was a founding member of the anti-protectionist Free Food League. 
In October, Balfour's government sided with Chamberlain and announced protectionist legislation. Churchill's outspoken criticism of Balfour's government and imperial protectionism, coupled with the letter of support he sent to a liberal candidate in Ludlow, angered many conservatives. In December 1903, the Oldham Conservative Association informed him that it would not support his candidature in the next general election. In March 1904, Balfour and the Conservative front bench walked out of the House of Commons during one of his speeches. He described their response as a very unpleasant and disconcerting demonstration. In May he expressed opposition to the government's proposed aliens bill, which was designed to curb Jewish migration into Britain. He stated that the bill would appeal to insular prejudice against foreigners, to racial prejudice against Jews, and to labor prejudice against competition, and expressed himself in favor of the old tolerant and generous practice of free entry and asylum to which this country has so long adhered, and from which it has so greatly gained. On 31 May 1904, he crossed the floor, defecting from the Conservatives to sit as a member of the Liberal Party in the House of Commons. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?